Happy Monday, y'all. Hope your weekend was a good one. We have the star of the show, Camellia Beans. Now, y'all heard me talk. I hate to say this. Many times I'm a bean snob. Mm -hmm. You heard it. I confessed on live TV. I'm a bean snob. Camellia Beans is the only beans that Miss Lippy buys. So, in this recipe, you can use any brand you want, okay? Any brand you can afford. But if you can get camellia beans, you rocking with the, with the top notch. And this is why. <laughs> three pounds, okay? I had three pounds. Can y'all see this? I rinsed and I washed and I went through and I only had this many half beans. Let me see if you can see how it kind of, they kind of split or a little broke bean and I don't care for a little broke bean. That's it guys, out of three pounds. Mm -hmm. And that's why, not to mention, they're just, they're very fresh. It's, even though it's a dry bean, it's not dry. So, anytime I can get camellia beans on sale, I stock up. And I was fixing to go ahead and can my black beans because I found the black beans on sale about ooh, six, seven weeks ago. And I'm just now getting to the window where I have time to go ahead and get them canned up. And I said, you know what? I need to show my friends because y'all hear me talk about camellia. I think a couple of you said, well, what is it? I, that's how I pronounce it. Well... Here you go, you can screenshot. You can't miss it, it's got the, the rose, the flower on it. So, that's the beans that you always hear me talk about. So in today's video, we're gonna can black beans. There is so many recipes out there for black beans because it's not complicated. It's a great recipe for beginners. But y'all know, I gotta bring my, my lippy twist on it. Mm-hmm. Can y'all guess what the lippy twist is? Mm-hmm. Leave a comment down below before you continue the video. See if y'all can guess what the lippy twist is. <laughs> it ain't a video without a lippy video. <laughs> so let me show you what I've done, okay? I took and I rinsed them in my colander Picked out the little broke pieces, which was, what, 10, 11 little pieces, if that. So, I'm going to turn you around. i got to show you the step. Now, I don't do uh, what they call dry pack, dry canning. I don't like the texture when I open a jar. That's just my preference, okay? They tend to get mealy, but that's just my opinion. That doesn't make it wrong. Y'all, I'm all about the texture thing, you know, just forgive me. So, this is what I do moving forward to canning them. Right here in my large stock pot is my three cans of black beans. I have, let me go down to the, probably about three inches of water above the beans. And I started off with cold water now. And I'm just going to bring them right at the bowl. That's it. And I will turn the stove eye off and cover, and I'm going to let them rest about an hour, okay? And that's all I'm going to do. Now, we won't be using um, the water that's in here. Mm -mm. So that's all I'm going to do, guys. So as soon as it starts to boil, and it's got a little bowl to them, not like a crazy one, I'm going to turn the eye off cover them, walk away for an hour. That gives me time to finish up my last load. And yeah, we'll be getting ready to can and I can go ahead and get everything set up too. I will be using my electric pressure canner because I do think that, yeah, I won't need to get my large pressure canner and double stack. Mm -mm. So there you have it. We're fixing to put a twist and it's a special twist on your standard canned black beans and guys all of this 
These, let me get them. I got them on sale for $1.50. Okay. So, let's see. If three went in there, that's what? Three, four, four dollars and fifty cents. I think a can of black beans is what? A buck fifty? And it's not even a pint, is it, these days? So, you know, it, you may spend a little bit more buying a little bit more quality bean, but you're going to still get so much more in volume and quality. But, you know, any bean to this recipe will do. Okay, just remember that. All right, I got to go fold my last load of clothes. Y'all know it's Monday. Laundry, floors, mopping, dust, all that stuff mm. that I don't want to do. I'd rather just do this. Mm-hmm. All day long. <laughs> While the black beans are sitting there soaking, I finished the laundry, and I thought I'd come outside and show you what we've been doing all weekend. What you're looking at is a Tacoma Sun Trumpet. Look at those beautiful flowers. But yesterday, if you can see the cuts in a lot of the branches, it was six feet tall. And I trimmed it back because I will be transplanting this. Bad location because it was growing over and hanging on the walkway. So I will be transplanting this. But let me show you what we've done with the cuttings. Oh boy, I hear a few sprinkles happening. But you'll see a bucket here. It's got about 50 cuttings. Now we started with two of those trumpets. But there's a story how we got the second one. We have another bucket here with about 50 cuttings. Now, the two cuttings that's sitting in these mineral totes, we were able to separate the second plant, and we ended up with one, two, and three sections that already had established roots. And that's what we'll be doing with these, and of course, I'll make a video. So, out of one plant, I will have, hopefully, because you're going to lose some, I'm hoping to have about 50 total. I know you're saying, Lippy, why you want 50 of them? Because. <laughs> Guys, this is one of my favorite, favorite evergreens. Yes, it's an evergreen. Now, to grow these, you have to be in a high 8, 8B, moving up to zone 10. You can grow them in seven, six and seven. You probably won't yield the amount of blossoms because these will bloom up until frost. And if they are out in the elements, I just cut them back to about six inches above ground, treat them kind of like a lantana, and they will just come right on back. As where if you're going down to like a seven or a six zone, um, you're really going to have to cut them back or either cover them. But what happened was that front one that I just showed you, the original one, when I planted it, one of the pieces had, or one of the stems like this. Let me, let me pull one up so you can see. I don't know. I'll have to fix it. Okay. Which is not a big deal. Okay. Here's one stem. See? Well, if you look at, there's a fork in there. See, there's three actual stems. There's one, here's two, and then there's three, okay? I'm gonna cut right below that fork. I know you can't see my face. And I'm going to put aloe vera gel on the tip of it, and then I'm gonna root it. That's what we did with that one that had broke off. And with, from June to now, which is towards the end of October, we were able to separate that and we got three individual plants with roots this big. So guys, they have a big mass of roots. 
I didn't want to put them in the ground moving towards winter. In the spring, I will remove these from these mineral totes and I will find their permanent house. And I want to try to incorporate it throughout the garden because this is the best honeybee, hummingbird, and butterfly feeder for our area. So I thought I'd show you, now I got a big mess because I went to pull it up because right now the bucket, it's full of water and they're all just setting in there, all the cuttings. Remember, I think it was uh, Friday, we did a garden update and I said, I've got to make the time to do some separation of all the aloe vera pups. Well, we ended up with 24 aloe vera pups and there's three down here. So I felt very accomplished. Here's the basil. I told you I was gonna cut back and see what it would do. I did this one Saturday morning and it really has not gone into any shock, guys. The leaves are still very, very hardy. So we're gonna see how it fares over the winter. Now, minus all the mess behind me, something we have been waiting for, and you guys that has followed us, y'all know about these, uh, what do we call them, like koi ponds or miniature lakes, or, that, or a pond, should I say? We don't really know why there was six of them. We're down to one. Because remember, we've had piles of dirt that our neighbor gifted us when he dug a pond, uh, first part of the summer. Well, Mr. Jim, my other neighbor, we did some bartering and he came down and he moved all the dirt and two of these ponds was filled in. Now we'll have to get a little bit more once it settles and really pack it down. But we have one left to go and that was the front one because we're utilizing it to burn all that pine straw. But let me show you, I'm just, it's like we're inching our way to the other side of the property, getting it clean. So I'm just over the moon over this. Look y'all, it is covered. It started here and it went all the way here. And it was full of bricks and just junk. So we had to dig down, bury it all. But yeah, Buddy and I are tickled. And remember I said we were extending? Well, we got this far. I wasn't out here. And Buddy didn't know how I wanted him to uh, cut the ground cover, which I do use a blowtorch, and he did. So he just went ahead and made larger cuts to bring it through. And we're just going to take a piece and come back over and staple it down and then he also has added some center post so we hope to get this done this week get the ground cover we're going to carry it all the way to right about the edge of where that sinkhole was and that's going to continue our berry berry part of the garden but look guys we're inching our way week by week and I'm just, what can I say? I'm tickled. So even though we're canning black beans with a surprise ingredient, I still had to show y'all what we accomplished. We have waited a long time, guys. And, you know, when we make that little milestone, I want to share with y'all. Because I know a lot of you out there are still making y'all's milestones. Or y'all are still rebuilding since 2020. And that's the path that we're on. We're rebuilding since 2020. And just that little bit lets us know that things are gonna be accomplished with patience. I think that is my true word every day. Patience, Lippy, patience. And since 2020, I've learned a lot of patience. <laughs> so we gotta go camp. Time got away. It's been an hour and 15 minutes while we was out there running around with rain coming down. Mm-hmm. But wasn't it worth it? Y'all, I'm just so stoked 
something so simple as filling in that hole and I didn't take it to the other side of the property. There was another hole. Y'all, you thought I hit the lottery. Mm -hmm. But now we got the can because my beeper went off. So it let me know my jars was warm and ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and get these packaged up. I've got eight pints. That's how many fits in my electric canner. I'm going to probably run another batch. I could have brought out the big one. But y'all, I'm kind of spoiled to this one because I still have a few more things to do and this electric canner allows me to do those things. So we got to rock this out with a special ingredient. Did y'all put y'all's comments down there? I'm just curious. We're going to start with one pint. My jars are warm. They just come out of the electric canner. The water in the canner is warm. My beans are hot. And I do not want this juice. So the first thing we got to do, let me get my glasses on. Because y'all, I'm blind as a bat with this light coming on me. I like to put my seasoning in first. We're going to start with a fourth of a teaspoon, and I don't need that right now, of cumin. Okay. Now you can spice however you want. I do like the cumin because what I use the black beans for is our taco soup. I also put it in our Spanish rice if we're having enchiladas. So by flavoring it at the front end, you don't have to do anything but dump and go. And yes, I do drain the liquid off of my canned black beans. Yes, I do. I, I just don't like that dark colored juice. Now, we're going to use canning salt. This is not a preservative. Remember, I've told y'all that. It's just a flavor enhancer, so it's not required. But I like to use canning salt, and I'm using one half teaspoon. If you were doing quarts, you would do a teaspoon. So let's get all of this in there. Okay, there is my canning salt. Now, the secret ingredient. Did y'all happen to catch the hint? <laughs> Full throttle. And the reason why I'm gonna use my Trinity blend is because it has bell pepper, onions, garlic, a little celery, a little salt. It's got all the flavors that will marry well in these beans. And I am going to use a half a teaspoon. Now, I have tried this in pinto beans to test, and it was out of this world. So, mixing it in with the cumin, I know my black beans are going to be seasoned phenomenal. So, no chopping onions, no chopping any bells, no crushing any garlic. It's all ready to go. So now let's fill our jars and I'm just going to do one for the sake of the video. I'm going to drain as much of the juice as I can. Now because I've pre-soaked these, I don't have to use just a quarter of a cup of dry, okay? I can add way more beans. Now some people will bring it up to the neck. I didn't let mine soak overnight so I will go losing some. Let me see where I'm at. I've got too many, so I'm just going to, I'll do this. Yes, I make a mess, guys, and it's okay. Yep, that's where I want it, okay? Right where it bubbles, the, the, the jar actually bubbles up. So three quarters of a way. You can go up to the neck, but since I did not soak mine, and they still, here's a bean because I can chunk it. They're kind of tender, but they're not rock hard. See how you can mash them? So they're going to swell a little bit more. If I had soaked them overnight and brought them to that bowl and let them sit, then you could bring your bean up to the one inch mark. But I only like that one hour, and then they finish cooking in the pressure canner and they don't break all up. 
Now I'm gonna add just plain tap water to that one inch mark, okay? And I'm gonna debubble. Yes, you want to debubble. You don't want any pockets there. And I use a chopstick. Y'all have seen me do this. All right, using paper towel that's soaked in vinegar. Find out where my front is on my jar. I'm gonna add my flat. I'm gonna add my ring, just finger tight. And that's one jar down. Now guys, let me show you something. All right, I debubbled this. And obviously I had a pocket because I've got to add a little bit more liquid. You wanna have an inch headspace. So you see, there's another reason to make sure you debubble because it's gonna let you know if you need to add more liquid. I will be doing another batch. That's the laziness in me. I didn't wanna go tote that big pressure canner. But all eight pints are in. They're gonna go 75 minutes. If you were doing quarts, they're, what, 90 minutes. But it's 75 minutes according to the ball book. Y'all know I'm, I'm the ball book, follow the rule kind of person. So 75 minutes, that allows me now to go and do what I need to, to complete. I have a couple of little chores I wanna comp complete. Then I can get the second batch going once this cools down Supper going, life is good. Guys, I am on good schedule. It's 2.15 in the afternoon. I am accomplishing everything that I set out to do this morning. So it's a good Monday day. Aren't they beautiful? I have Four more pints to go, so that means those three bags yielded me 12 pints of black beans. No siphoning. I love the color. It doesn't have, as you could see, it doesn't have that black colored juice. It's a really nice tan, maybe a little bit darker tan. And that's why I try to use just fresh tap water. And it's all about a preference. But I'm gonna go ahead and, hello, I love that sound. I'm gonna get my canner to cool down, get the other four pints in there, wrap this video up, and not sure what's gonna bring tomorrow, but I'm sure I'll see y'all sometime tomorrow. But as always, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. And I'll see you on the next one.